Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 20 of my C++ video tutorial series. This is the second part in which I will talk about regular expressions, and more specifically, I'm going to cover more matching options, greedy versus lazy matching boundary sub-expressions, and a whole lot of problems. Like always, all of the code is available in the description, and if you haven't watched any of the previous tutorials, you probably should, otherwise you might be confused, and I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so for this part of the tutorial, of course, we're going to need this library, and here's some other different libraries you probably should get here. I'm not going to use all of them, but for the tutorials, I basically just use everything that we will use over the course of the tutorials so that you have all of them. You can pause your screen, of course. And this is the version of print matches that I'm going to use because I want to be able to grab sub expressions here. And you can see here I explain all the different parts. You want to either read that or you can go watch the previous part of the tutorial. And then on top of that, I cover right here everything that we have so far discovered about using regular expressions in the previous part of the tutorial. And I think that's enough information for us to go ahead and start with our first problem. Okay, so the very first thing I'm gonna talk about is matching zero or one of a specific thing that you are looking for. So I'm gonna create a string one and I'm gonna put everybody's favorite thing inside of here, cats and more cats. And then we're going to define our regular expression that we have here. And I'm gonna call this a reg one. And then inside of here, I am going to go and grab both of these different cats that we have inside of here. So I'm gonna say that I know I need to find cat. And then I also know that I am going to want the S if I want both of them. However, I might not want both of them. So I'm gonna put the question mark inside of there. And then I can just call our good old friend print matches and pass in string one and regular expression one. And we can run that. And you can see that we were able to grab both cat as well as cats. All right, so that is how we can grab zero or one of an item with our little plus symbol there. And now I wanna talk about how we can grab either zero or more items. Okay, so here we have, I went and changed these to two. And inside of here, what we're gonna do is we're going to put doctor, doctors, and then doctors. So the different version of doctor. And the star symbol is going to allow us to match for zero or more of what precedes it. So what do we know we have in every single one of these? Well, we know that we have doctor, and then we are going to put a plus symbol inside of it. And we know that we are potentially going to have an S, or we are going to have our quote inside of there. And then we're going to put our star inside of there. And if we run that, we're going to see that we get all three of our different doctors. However, you'd also be able to come in here and get something similar just to cover what we've covered previously by going zero to two and saving that. And you're also going to see that you get all three doctors. So I just wanted to cover both of those. And now I'm going to move on to our first problem. Okay, so for our first problem, on Windows, new lines are sometimes listed as just simply a backslash N. However, sometimes they are also listed as a backslash R, backslash N. So what I want you to do is I want you to take this string that I have provided for you here on the screen, and I want you to be able to replace either a normal new line or a RN new line with just a simple space. And how you're going to do that is what with what we covered in the previous tutorial, which is the regular expression replace tool. So you can pause your video right now and go ahead and give that a go. Otherwise, I'm going to show you how to solve it. All right, so pretty simple stuff here. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to say that we could have our little carriage return here. However, we may not have it. And then we are definitely going to get all of our new lines. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go and do a replace on those. I'm just gonna call this line and this is going to be standard uh, regular expression. Oops. And then I'm going to do 
the replace, which is what we covered previously. Then I'm going to pass in the string that we are working with, the regular expression we are working with. And then I said I wanted to have a space there instead of what we had previously. And then I'm just going to output that information just so that we are aware that we have that. And if we run it, you're going to see that they print out without any of the new lines inside of them. So there you go, there's a little problem for you. And now I wanna talk about greedy and lazy matching. Okay, so what we're gonna do, um, let's try to grab everything between two different tags here. So we'll have name and then we're going to have a TV show that I liked a long time ago called Life on Mars. And then I'm gonna have our, there is going to be our string. And then I'm going to also have another one of these. No point in actually typing all that out. Better to be lazy. All right. And then I'm going to get rid of that and freaks and geeks. Okay. So that's what we have here. Now, what I want to do is I want to grab just the names of of the two TV shows. So I'm going to use the traditional way of doing that and then see if it works. So I'm gonna say name, and then I'm gonna say that what I want is everything that lies between these different tags. And that should work perfectly fine. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna do this and it's gonna work and then I'm gonna run it and then I'm gonna see my results and they are completely wrong. Now the reason why it is completely wrong is this little star symbol here is greedy. That means that it grabs the biggest match possible. So we are not able to get what we were looking for using that. So what we instead want to do is use a little guy here, which is our question mark. And this is going to provide us with a lazy match which is going to be the smallest amount that can possibly be grabbed. And you're also going to be able to do lazy matches with, uh, well, of course, with what we just did right there. We're also going to be able to do with the plus, or we would also be able to come in here and let's say we're trying to grab a specific number like that okay so those are the different guys that we would be able to work with in regards to grabbing specific things so you'll see that just by adding that little question mark inside of there if we run it that we are going to get exactly what we wanted so sometimes people think greedy versus lazy matching is kind of complicated but it's actually as you saw right there quite simple and next i'm going to talk about word boundaries Okay, so we use word boundaries to define where our matches are going to start as well as where they are going to end. And this specific guy right here is going to match the start or the end of a word as you're going to see right here. So what I'm looking to do is we want ape. So what I want to do here is I want to grab the different ape options that we have in here or the words that begin with apex. Now, if I specifically come in here and just type in ape and we want to grab this guy right there and we go and we run it, you're going to see that we get ape and ape and it basically just cuts off the end of apex. However, what we can do is if we just want to get the ape using word boundaries, meaning that we don't want it to match for the apex that we have right there, what we can simply do is come in and define that. So we're going to come in and put the B inside of there like that, and then put the other word boundary right inside of there. And if we do it and run it, you're gonna see now, whoops, that it only matched for, oh, I know why it only did that. It's because I got two of those inside of there. Let's go and run it again. And now you're going to see that it only grabs the very first ape. So that's a quick example of how we can define word boundaries. And now I want to talk about string boundaries. Okay, so we have a new string inside here. And basically what I want to do is I want to match everything up to, but not including our little at symbol inside of there. How can we do that? Well, we have two different string boundaries. This guy right here is going to match the beginning of a string and if it is outside of our regular parentheses because you know that this also has the double duty of saying things like don't include um, a through c 
you know, that works also. But if used outside of those brackets, it is going to match for the beginning of a string. And then we have another one, which is our dollar sign. And this is going to match for the end of the string that we are going to want to work with. And I'm going to show you how to use both of them. So at first, what I want to do is I want to get everything, but not get the at symbol. How can I do that? Well, inside of this guy right here, I'm going to put that symbol right there, dot, and then a star. And then I'm going to say that I want everything as long as it is not an at symbol, just so that I can go in there and have an excuse of to uh, use it in its double duty role. And if we run that, you're going to see that it matches everything up to, but not including our at symbol. And let's go and do another one. Let's do it in the opposite direction. So let's go and get rid of all of that stuff. And let's put the at symbol in the front here. And I'm going to say get this string. So here what we want to do is we want to match everything after the at symbol, but not including it. So let's go and chop that down right there. And everything else is perfectly fine. So what we're going to do here is we're going to instead put our brackets inside of there and we're going to say that we do not want our at symbol. And let's say that we also do not want to include any spaces. And then we're going to go dot and star and we're going to use the dollar sign to match for the end of our string. And we can save that and run it and you're going to see that it indeed gets the string that we were looking for and avoids getting both the at symbol as well as the additional space that's inside of there. So that's kind of neat stuff. And now I want to go on and have another problem for you to solve. Okay, so what I have here are three important telephone numbers. And what I want you to do is get the numbers minus the area codes from this string. And if you're unaware of what I mean by area code, I mean these guys. So what I want you to do is just get the number that follows afterwards. And then I'll put it to the screen, of course. So you can pause your video right now and go and do that. Otherwise, I'm going to do it for you right now. Okay, so the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say I want something. And it is going to be 3 in length and then we're going to have our dash and then what I specifically want to grab I'm going to put between parentheses and that is going to be 8 in length so let's go and throw that inside of there and then of course we're going to close our parentheses that we had right there and we can save that and we can run it and you're going to see that it outputs those numbers exactly like we were looking for. All right, so kind of neat stuff. And now for our final example, I'm gonna show you some additional ways we can work with multiple sub-expressions. Okay, so in this situation, we have a string here and what we're specifically looking for is we wanna get our telephone number. However, we want to get the area code and all these other different numbers inside of here minus our dash and we want them to be output as separate sub expressions so how can we do that well i'm going to use my parentheses once again i'm going to go dot and three and then this that's going to get me our area code and then i'm going to put our dash inside of there outside of the sub expression which means i'm not going to get it and a dot and a star and then another dot and there's another parentheses and a star and there we go now it's a matter of how are we going to output those so we're going to be matching a string so we want to get all of our individual matches so that's going to be s match and i'm just going to call it matches and then i'm going to cycle through and i'm going to output them so i'm going to go standard regular expression and I'm specifically going to use search which I covered in the previous tutorial and I'm searching through that string that we have right there I'm then going to put matches in just like I did previously I'm going to put our regular expression inside of there oops make sure we close off that parenthesis and then I'm going to cycle through all of our results so I'll say I starting at one while I is less than matches and this is going to be size. And then of course, I'm going to increment I each time we cycle through all of our matches. And then I'm going to output all of our matches and use the incrementing index that we have. And 
throw a new line in after we print out all of those. And then we're going to get rid of print matches because we're not using it this time. And we're going to save it and we're going to run it. And you're going to see that we were able to get each of those individual numbers output on our screen. So there you go, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I'm probably going to do one more video on some more complex things we can do with regular expressions inside of C++. And like always, please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.